it's really important to be able to do voltage drop calculations to ensure the safety of electrical equipment um, to make sure that the uh, the circuits that you design are do not have a a voltage that is going to drop so much that it, it's going to that our loads are going to be pulling too much current in the circuit um, or that they're not going to have enough uh, voltage available for the loads to operate properly and safely. So the Canadian Electrical Code Section 8 Rule 102 um, uh, provides a guideline for calculating the voltage drop um, appropriately. And before that, Rule 100 in Section 8 uh, just reminds us that we, when we're calculating the currents that, res that revolt, result from these loads, uh, we have to um, we have to remember our supply voltages that are available in Canada, uh, which is which are li listed here. Uh, these are all available, some more common than than others, but these are these will be our our divisors uh, when we are doing our voltage drop calculations. Voltage drop calculations are not a difficult type of calculation at all, uh, but first let's kind of look at what these calculations pertain to. And all we're gonna talk about today is the typical installation that's in sub rule one of rule 102 section eight of the Canadian Electrical Code. And um, that's uh, we, we do really need to know what branch circuits, feeder circuits and, and services and, and what our loads are, et cetera. Um, uh, to do these calculations. And here's just a, an example of a typical circuit and what we would call, um, we would call our feeder conductors um, to be to be in, in this section here um, that includes our metering equipment up to our overcurrent protection devices for our branch circuits. And um, the consumer service conductors to be from the demarcation point to that main service disconnect um, and, and then feeder conductors in between. And then of course the branch circuit conductors are the ones that are going to take the energy from that last overcurrent protection device, you know, our fuses or our circuit breakers in here on onto our outlets or our devices or our electrical equipment. So uh, we have our service conductors, our, our service conductors, our feeder conductors and our branch conductors are what we're going to be what we're going to be looking at for these calculations. It's worthwhile to note that power is usually considered in watts for these calculations. Um, and we don't take into account the power factor for these calculations. We get the system up and running before you take a look at the power factor. Um, don't remember, don't forget though, that trend, that some equipment is, is not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to look at at the nameplate and see watts, you're gonna see volt amps for transformers, you're gonna see um, volt amps resistive for uh, capacitors, et cetera. Motors sometimes are even rated with horsepower on them, um, which you can, you can uh, readily convert from. So these voltage drop calculations um, have, uh, for the typical installation, rule 102 will give us a method to make sure that the 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 utilization voltage for the equipment is within the values that contribute to safety of the electrical installation optimum performance of the equipment so they are based on the Im impedance of the conductor and the current flowing through it which of course is is addressed in section 4 of the Canadian electrical code and we know from ohm's law that if that conductor size is going to not change and the current is increased, then of course the voltage drop would, would have to increase as well. So that's the premise for these calculations, which again are not very difficult calculations to do and we will get to them shortly. Uh, so here's, here's what uh, rule 102 subsection one for a, um, for a typical installation, which is all we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, and this is a nice, pictorial from the Canadian Electrical Code Part 1 handbook that shows you the, the maximum allowable voltage drops in these circuits. And that is uh, a 3% in the feeder circuit, a 3% maximum in the branch circuit, but an overall 5% maximum across this whole uh, circuit. So that's what we would want to stick to. And here's how you do it. So of course our Canadian Electrical Code doesn't have our tables sitting right there in the code. 
Uh, the tables sit in, you know, sections that include all of the tables. Appendix D is one of those um, sections that has all of the tables. And this particular table that is going to apply to rule 102 about voltage drop is called table D3 that we know and love. And so that's the table that is used to calculate the voltage drop in low voltage circuits based on non-inductive loads. So when we look at table um, D3, we have to remember um, a few things here. So let's remember, let me just try to get, get a bit of a, a stylus up here. Uh, so what I, what I wanna do is, um, is, is really highlight that this table is for 1% drop in voltage. And it is for 120 volt to conductor copper circuits. So um, we have to remember 1% drop, we have to remember it is set for 120 volts. And when we're looking at this table, we remember those, those two items uh, that are relevant to us here. And then we have our current down this first column here. We can look for the current in the conductor that we are going to be, um, uh, you know, that's applicable to, to our, uh, our example. And then we have the size of the conductors here. Um, and then if it's 120 volts and you're looking for just a 1% voltage drop, then this would be the size of the conductors. So for, I mean, the, the length of the conductor that you can have before you exceed the 1% voltage drop. I mean, uh, yeah, that 1% voltage drop. So just as an illustration, let's say your size is number 10 or a 10 gauge wire. And um, it's going to, let's say uh, you have designed it so that it's going to be carrying five amps. So you're going to have a 10 gauge wire. Um, you've chosen 10 gauge wire to safely carry five amps at 120 volts. You don't want a voltage drop of more than 1%. Then as you do your sizing, you would have to or you do your design, you would have to um, ensure that that conductor does not exceed a length because these are the lengths in here, or we can call them distance, a length or a distance of um, 31, of uh, 31 meters. So this, again, this 10 gauge wire carrying five amps, so this 10 gauge wire carrying five amps at 120 volts with only 1% voltage dropping would be 31, um, 31 uh, meters long. Okay. It should not exceed 31 meters long. So that's how we use this chart. Now, what if we did not want it to be um, 120 volts. So this one's 120 volts. What if we want other voltages? Then there's a simple sort of um, calculation that we can do to find other voltages. So if we do other voltages, then what we have to do is take the distance from the chart So the distance at um, at one percent. I'm just going to say at one percent in meters, and we would multiply that by the ratio of the new voltage in me in volts over. 120 volts only because we're looking at the 120 volt table. So we um, we 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 have the distance from this table, but it applies to 120 volts. So we would need to multiply by the ratio of the new voltage to 120 volts would get us um, would get us the distance at other voltages equals distance. at um, other voltages. 
And I'm actually going to erase this here and I'm going to say the distance at at oops distance at 120 volts. So that would be our ratio. We're just multiplying through basically a ratio. And that'll get the distance at other voltages. Now, what if you are not quite so fussy about the voltage drop and you're okay with a different voltage drop? So let's take a look at, so this chart, again, this chart is 1% voltage drop. What if we want a different voltage drop? So if we want a different voltage drop, then we would multiply the distance by the new voltage drop. So multiply um, the distance by the new voltage drop. Or another way we can put this is we can we can write the whole whole ratio. We can say that um, distance the distance at one percent voltage drop to the ratio of the distance at um, X percent voltage drop will be directly um, related to um, 1% drop, which is literally the number one over X percent drop. And what you would get from that then um, is if you were to multiply these through and try to figure out distance at the new percent, uh, what that would be is distance um, at 1%. So you would take what's on the chart and you would multiply it by the new percentage of drop. Um, just because, because it's all over one percent drop, which is really sort of a unit. So your new distance is going to be the distance in the chart times the new distance. I mean, times um, the new drop. So I'm just going to put a base example on here. Um, I'll put an example. Example, how long? Uh, how long should that number 10 carrying 5 amps at 120 volts be? How long should uh, uh, number 10 carrying 5 volts at 120, oops, 5 amps at 120 volts be if uh, voltage drop must be 1%. And again, I'll just show how to answer that. We already talked about that. I just want to leave it as an example problem on here. Uh, so what we would do for that then is we would say, okay, it's a number 10. Here's our number 10. It's going to carry five amps, five amps. It's at 120 volts, 120 volts, I already have that chart, and it the drop is 1%. Easy peasy, I already have that drop. Um, so it is literally just read it from here. Answer 31.0 meters is how long that conductor can be. So that's how we do our voltage drop. So let's look at some calculations then, or some example problems. Actually, that's how we do the voltage drop. Um, let's make a new video for the um, for the example problems so that we can go um, 
um, back and forth between our screens.